at Shelters by Jesus podcast. And we are at Shelters by Jesus here in 12, on 12 McCollin Street in Skowhegan, Maine. And if you'd like to know more about us, you can check us out on our website. That is sheltersbyjesus.com. And if you'd like to be a part of our ministry, $9 will take somebody off the street. And we have Tom and Seth here. And Tommy is we're going to be doing administrative stuff. I'll explain what we're going to do in a minute. But we were just talking about how cold it is out right now. I was outside and my fingers turned white. I was out there about five minutes. Because of this place, there's people that aren't going to be out there today. They're going to be right here. So if you want more information, check us out on our website. Uh, you can call our office at 207-474-8833. And we'll be talking about books and stuff later. But what I want you to understand is right now we're in the office and we're going to be talking about administrative stuff. So at times the phones is going to ring. At times, Tom is going to answer it. If there's somebody coming in or whatever, there's going to be business. We're going to be looking at uh, contracts to get intake here because out there there's a lot of rumors about what we're about and what we do. And uh, I think we can set a bunch of those aside by answering a lot of questions through this. This is going to be a little different. This is like having our little children around and all of that. This is more of an informa informational what do they call it? Infomercials? <laughs> Whatever they're called. But uh, I really, I'm excited about bringing you into the office. You'll be, you're in here with us, sitting with us, and what we'll be talking about the whole thing going through. Uh, also, there's going to be people coming outside. They come for food, and uh, they'll be calling the office, and we let them know, and they take food out to them. So there's lots going to be going on, but this is what it's like if you're here at Shelters by Jesus in our office. So join us. Tom, you got a phone call. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and take the phone call. And we're going to go from there. Shelters by Jesus, can I help you? Okay, we'll let them know. All right, bye-bye. All right, I want to stop you just a second. All right, is that for food? That's for food. Tom, what do you do? And how do you let them know, what the pantry know? What's our system? Well, because the pantry's right below us, um, and we don't have to run up and down the stairs constantly because it's extremely busy. I uh, stomp three times on the floor. That signals them that someone is outside for a food box, and they take it out to them. All right, that's ever stomp. Okay. All right, we don't have Morse code. We have Tommy code. And uh, that's the other thing we could use. Uh, if somebody's out there, you're going, man, that seems like a pretty <laughs> antique, antiquated system. You're right. Uh, but here... People give $9 to get people off the street, and we watch out where the money goes. So, if But if you happen to have an intercom, uh, you have a friend that has one, they had a business, don't have any more, and you like to donate to us, that would be an awesome way for us to contact our, our um, pantry without giving three knocks on the floor to do that. But it works, it and we get by. Yes. Right, Seth? Yes. So, But you're right, Pastor. I mean, the intercom is a luxury. That's yes. Why we don't, that's why we don't own one. Yes. Um, so knocking on the floor is what we have, but it would sure make it quick and easy if we did have an intercom. Um, we wouldn't have to pat on the floor anymore, but hey, it is what it is. It right? is what it is. We have people coming here. Uh, we have three days a week. Tommy, when are we open? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 to 4. All right, 10 to 4. Yeah. And uh, so they'll come out front. And when COVID came, we started a new system about coming in, right? They used, right. To, they come used in. to come in um, and they would actually go through the pantry uh, because of COVID. Uh, we had them stay outside, call the office. The office signals the pantry. The pantry takes them out a box of food. Yep. And, uh, and since COVID's over, that system was working good. And we keep it in place. And it, it's worked really good. It works really good because the food is equitably distributed now. We make sure that every family gets meat, every family gets vegetables, protein, grains, um, desserts. If they have kids, we like to know because then we give out more food plus breakfast cereals when we have them. So instead of allowing people to come in and, and paw through what they want, and then by the end of the day, you have a family and we have no meat to give, now we decide, you know, how much into each family, and so every family gets an equal portion. And the other thing, Tom, if they happen to call you and it's not Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, and they right. say, we're hungry, what do we do? Well, it, it depends on the situation, but um, sometimes I'll say, you know, it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tomorrow they're open, come on in. Other times if the person, you know, is saying, uh, it's an emergency. Yep. Um, we'll make up a box for them and um, yep. you know work that out. Absolutely. We also have shut-ins that we deliver to people in wheelchairs who do not have a vehicle or a way of getting here. 
we will take them food, um, but we require evidence of that because there are those who just don't want to leave their home, you know. But but for our, our legitimate shut-ins, we will take food to them. Yeah. And we also continue to feed ex-residents who are, are still struggling a little bit. That's a good point. Feet. That's a good so, point. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and our only requirement, because, you know, some, some places only limit you to once a month or you got to be a resident, prove you're a resident. Um, I remember you told me that our only requirement is they have to be hungry. Yep. And uh, we, we stick to that. I don't care if they drive all the way from Los Angeles, California. If they're here to get food, they're going to get food. They're in the parking lot. They call our number because there's a number out there on the door. It says yep. call this number. They call in. Yep. We tap on the floor and the food goes out. The food goes we don't out. check and see if they're in a three-piece suit or no. they're pushing a bicycle. No, because sometimes case managers will come and pick up food for their shut-in clients. There you go. And so we don't want to, you know, judge somebody because of a car they're driving or what they're wearing, because a lot of them are helping relatives and friends. As yeah, they even for that. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so we do the best we can. Now the other thing is, uh, we have an intake process here. Uh, and there's a contract you have to sign, and Tom and Seth do the intake. Uh, Tommy uh, does it three days a week. Seth does it uh, the other two from Monday to Friday. They divide it up. And uh, if you call, uh, they'll, we, well, instead of me saying that, I don't take it. So if they're calling in, Tom, what do you want? What, if I called you and I was, ring, 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 shelters by Jesus, my name is Richard Berry. I want to come to your shelter. Right. What? What? What do you? What's our conversation? Well, the first thing I say is that uh, anyone who's looking to come here, uh, we have to do a background check on. We we didn't always do that in the past. However, we started bringing families in and children, and because of the children, um, we consider their uh, safety priority number Amen. one. Amen. So I asked for some basic information: a full name, date of birth, a town that they've lived in for three or four years. With that, I can do a background check. I also ask if they have a caseworker, what their name, what their company is. I try to get as much information as I can. Uh, I also ask them what's the situation that they become homeless. Um, and so with all that information, I do the background check. Um, and if everything works out, we tell them to come on in. Um, so um, there are things that will prohibit some people from coming here. Uh, if they're on the sex offender list. Uh, Which we, by law, we can't take them anyway. Right, right. That's illegal for them to be here because... Right, right. They would get arrested. And I let right. people know, you know, right up front that uh, there's certain things in regards to the contract. Um, when they come here, they sign it. Uh, part of which is we have a praise and prayer meeting every morning between 8 and 8.30. Yep. Every evening we have a Bible study from 6 to 7. Every weekend we have worship services. All of those things are mandatory. If you want to be a resident here, you have to attend those Call things. Okay. Brittany, there you go. Shelter by Jesus, can I help you? So you're a part of what we're doing today. <laughs> That's why we're doing this. We're allowing you to come in and share in our office. So this is an Bring over that. his belongings. Who are you referring to? Okay, so... He wants us to bring his belongings over to the hospital. So he's not coming back here? Okay, so he has somewhere else that he's going to. Okay, so um, we, we'll, we'll gather his things and we'll bring them over. Do we go into the emergency room? Unfortunately, I don't have a time frame right now um, in the middle of our meeting. Uh, but um, once I find out where our, our delivery driver is, uh, and get his belongings put together. We'll we'll get that we'll get that together and drop drop it off. But, but I, I just can't. I don't want to say that I'm going to be there in an hour and I'm not. Okay. Is there a way? What? Yeah, right now they're in the um, the men's uh, bunk room, which is locked, so there's no problems in there. And I've got his medications, assuming that he doesn't have those locked in the office. Okay. Okay, and your name is Maria? Miranda. Okay, Miranda. All right, we'll take care of that. All right. So, Tom, would you want to explain with that? I mean, these are different phone calls this isn't an intake call this right. was a because this was somebody yeah this here. was a little unusual uh it's a resident that's currently staying here 
he went to Reddington Fairview Hospital for some reason. I don't know why. Right. But uh, he not planning on coming back, and he wants us to bring his belongings to, to the, the hospital, hospital, which it, we'll be glad Eric, to do. Yeah. Is it Eric? Eric Carrera. Yeah, yeah. He's being transferred to Bangor. Okay. Yeah, that's why they need his stuff. But I already spoke to his case manager, so it should be handled. Just All right. right. So this this is stuff that goes on. Yeah. Uh, I set this up, <laughs> and in fact, uh, Seth, who does movies every day in, in the past, and he says, this is going to be really weird. Try to do this because the phone's going to ring. And I said, I just want to be natural. Let it ring. This is, you can see, this isn't scripted. So, but what I would like to do now, because there's so many rumors out there about what we do, what we allow, what we don't allow, what we accept, what we don't accept. We got the contracts here, and uh, I would like these gentlemen to go over the contracts uh, and let you hear what, what they are. And some of them might seem a wheel. We'll explain why that yeah. particular thing's in the contract. Yeah, absolutely, because we when we have it. So let's say someone is approved to come here. Yeah. Um, then they come, and then we have a contract that they have to fill out. We also have a personal information sheet they have to fill out, and then they have a freedom of uh, or release of information form they have to fill out. Right. So this helps us to serve them, and the contract is something that we don't just have them sign. We read it line by line and explain to them why rules are the way they are. Sometimes they'll ask, like, why is that? And, yep. and happy to answer them um, because we want them to know what they're signing and what our expectations of their behavior is, right? So, Read like, some of the rules. Sure. So we have a list of prohibited items like weapons such as guns, knives, pepper sprays, pocket knives, and screwdrivers, hatchets. Anything can hurt somebody. We've seen it all come through this Yes, door. we have. Um, and we also include pornography, narcotics, and alcohol. Okay, those things are not permitted here either. And we warn people, look, if, if you have a history of drugs or, or drinking, we have a zero tolerance here. Right. So just because you're not drinking here on the property, but you go off somewhere and get slammed and then stagger back here thinking you're going to have a bed, you're going to find a different situation. Right. We're not a wet shelter and we're not a flop house. You know, we expect people to, to, to break their addictions. Right. And they know this up front. This isn't sprung on them. They this don't, is not. They just don't go out and drink and come in and go, oh, well, I didn't know I this. Right. They, they're told up front and they sign this contract. Correct. What other things we got on there? Well, like prescription medications. So they're locked here in the safe okay. and they're under camera observation and they're given out twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. If they have a PRN, which is take as needed, they take a couple extra with them to get them through the day or through the night. Yeah. But we've had to do that, number one, because we have kids that wander around. The last thing we want them to do is find a pill on the floor Amen. and take Absolutely. it, thinking it's candy. Or two, some of the uh, medications they're on have street value. Yeah. And so rather than them being sold or traded or whatever, they're locked here and they're accounted for. Um, so uh, we also have a mandatory religious services. And this is probably the biggest one that we get... Um, Object, object. Well, the rumors out there, we're a cult, all kinds oh, of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, what what are our contract? What are you contracted to? If I kept you and I go, well, what's this religious service stuff? What about what am I obligated to if I sign that paper? So, this is what I like to explain to them. Number one, we are called shelters by Jesus. That's a good thing. Not yep. shelters by government. Yep. We receive zero grant money. Zero money from the government, from town, uh, from town, county, state, federal, nothing. We are privately funded by those that God moves to keep us going. And because of that, we have the freedom to make our own rules. Yes. And one of the rules is you have to attend religious services. Yep. Now, that's a praise and prayer every morning. That is giving God his due praise and uh, lifting our concerns to him. Now, I don't, now, I go to you, but I don't want to participate. I don't want to pray uh, a praise. So what? What, she, what do you say to that? So, here's the proof that we're not a cult. We're not under a delusion we can make you believe anything. There you go. I cannot make you believe in Jesus. However, we are shelters by Jesus. God provides our food, our clothing, our, our beds, everything. And so because he does that, we believe God deserves praise and prayer. Now, if you want to sit in the sanctuary during these events and hang your head down, uh, not listen... That's a, that's your choice. Okay. You, you so don't. you're not. If I come in here and I go, well, I'm not going to. Have, I'm going to sit, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to praise. And I, you know, I'm not going to participate. But I'm going to sit. So am I? If I got to leave now because of that? No. Nope. There you go. No, but you do have to be there, and you do have to be quiet. Absolutely, and you are held accountable to go to the service. You are. It's it's non. Uh, Tommy will explain to them. It's non-negotiable. Right. Right. You tell well, them up front, right, Tom? Is if 
we would allow people to come here and not attend our services, then the people that are here who are kind of on uh, fence. the fence about whether they want, they won't come. And the next thing you know, you know, it, just no becomes, one's in it becomes, you know, very confusing. You'll have people roaming around the properties when the staff members are in these meetings, yeah. uh, not knowing what they're doing or what they're getting into involved with. So it's good to just have everybody in the same place at the same time. And again, it's not where we're forcing them to believe in anything. Um, but my belief is that if someone's sitting and listening, even if they don't take it in and, and appreciate it for what it's worth, um, maybe down the road it will, it will sink in. Absolutely. But, That's know, the point. It's kind of like a mustard seed, you know, idea. Yeah. We believe in God's ability to change lives. Yes. And those, and we've had people go in there staunchly resistant. Right. And all of a sudden they're saved. Yep. And then, you know, their life's turned around and they're working again. Their family's back. Their, everything's back yep. because they trusted God. And that's why we do that. Um, we do give out daily chores every morning. And Tom, feel free to jump in, but if I miss anything. Yep. Um, and the daily chores are about 15 minutes each morning. It's sweep a floor, mop a floor, wash a table. You live here, pitch in, keep it clean, yep. right? So what, say I, I want to be exempted. What? From it. I'm going, okay. I'm, I'm physically unable to do chores. What What are you asking of me? To I, make, to I want I want medical proof. Okay, that's what yeah. I want you to say. Yeah, I want, I want a doctor's note, yep. and it has to have an expiration date on it, or I need some kind of diagnosis paper that says I have been diagnosed with this condition and have been instructed by my doctor not to do these activities. Absolutely. And, if we want, and once you got that, yep. we take them off the list. Right. right? Yep. And Absolutely. we just ask them to do what they can. You know, hey, if you feel up to it, you can wipe down a table, that'd be great. Yep. If some people that come here, we, we expect everybody to be self-sufficient when they come here. Be able to they they can go to the bathroom by themselves, right. they can shower themselves. themselves, they can get up and out of yep. bed by themselves. Yep. Uh, but some people come here and, you know, they're um, not physically up to, I mean, they, they are self-sufficient, but they have severe challenges. Yep. And with those people, uh, it's pretty obvious we don't make them mop and sweep the floor. Now, but I want to stop you right there because... We had a gal named Sherry who's going to be on my future podcast. Yeah. And what what Sherry's condition when she was here? How, what was she doing? Missing a leg and, and bound to a wheelchair. Yeah. And, or a walker. She used a walker. And did she do chores? Yeah. She did. She asked she, me, um, why don't you put me on the chore list? Yes. I was kind of like, um, yeah. Well, what do you want to do? And she said whatever, and I put her on the chore list. And yeah. they get they get appreciative of what's going on here. They do. And for the they yeah. want to give back. Yeah. And the other thing is. Yeah. Rumors are we uh, discriminate against people that are handicapped. What would you say to that, Mr. Mm, all right, Seth. first of all, nothing infuriates <laughs> me more than that. Uh, I'm a disabled veteran in charge of the whole facility. Yep. Okay? We have uh, so many disabled people come in and out of this place on wheelchairs, on electric chairs, on uh, walkers, on canes, oxygen, uh, oxygen, <laughs> um, mentally disabled, physically disabled. It didn't matter to us. What mattered to us, do we have the room and can we facilitate you yep. where you're not in an unsafe environment for you because you need constant care, which I don't have people to do constant care. Yep. That's really the only consideration. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. I don't care if you have a problem walking or you can't lift stuff. Hey, you know what? God didn't say discriminate against people that are harmed. He said, look out for those people. And that's what we do here. All of our buildings are ADA compliant. We are the only, um, as far as I know, the only uh, homeless shelter with a certified oxygen room yep. for people who are on oxygen so they can have their machines at the shelter. And our guys will look out for each other and help each other out. So that that just, that's utter nonsense. It's insulting. Well, we had actually do an intake. We had one guy had one leg, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, it's Tracy. Yeah. Yep. So he actually he worked in the office and intake. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We will work with anybody. And so if we can. imagine Tracy getting the call. You guys discriminate discriminate against handicap. Yeah. <laughs> handicap. Yeah. We've had blind people. Yeah, had... uh, that's true. We've had blind people. We've had deaf people. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't matter to me. It really didn't matter to me. So, so I, as I, long as I, I look at it this way, as long as uh, it's a safe environment for the person that's going to be here. Yes. Number one, that we can take uh, care of. Them. Yeah, I don't want to put us in a position where, um, you know, we're, we're, we have such egos that we can take care of anyone. Yes. Because sometimes we can't. We can't. But no, as long as, as long as they can, go ahead, yeah, take yeah, it away. Yeah. It's all right. That's probably what we do here. Yep. They're in the so office with us. Can I help you? So here we go. You can see it's it's busy here. This is why. <laughs> right. I told them go ahead and answer the phones, whatever. 
I'll shut up because Tommy can't hear. <laughs> right out, Miranda just called maybe 15 minutes ago. And I explained to her, right now I'm in a meeting, but as soon as I can find out uh, the availability of our driver, uh, we're going to gather his belongings and drop him off to the emergency room. Okay, again, um, I, I'm not able to do that at this moment. It, like maybe in about 45 minutes if you want to give me a call back. Okay, here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to put a call on to someone in our men's shelter uh, and explain to them what the situation is and that you'll be here. How long would it take you to get here? So let's say that uh, is 30 minutes good? We'll be down here then. Yep. Yeah, that'll work. Right now we're in the middle of a podcast. Yes, you're interrupting us. <laughs> <laughs> All this business. Uh, okay, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, 30 minutes and out. They'll go to the men's shelter, the light building, and ask for Rick. There you go. Okay. Awesome. All right, thank you. We're off and running. So, if it's, if it's RFH, don't ask me again. So, you're, you're, you're going to be getting some interruptions like this. Hopefully, you'll bail with us, go through it. But this one, I, I wanted you to see what it was all about and get a feel for what we do here. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, I just want to make this point, too. When we receive an inquiry as to someone coming here, we don't look for reasons for them not to come. We look for reasons for them to come. That's a good point. And, yeah. and that's the attitude we have. And really, you know, the only time we've said no to somebody is, like, one, if they're a sex offender. Right. Two, if they're if they require medical or, or it's nurse, certified. It's actually system. a nursing home. Nursing home or, or assisted living. Or assisted living, living yeah. Situation. Because we can't, we cannot meet their needs. We can't. And a lot of them, uh, most of the times, we run the situation, if we took them, They'll drop them off and just organization will just say, oh, fine, they'll take it, that's okay. And then they don't get what they need. So actually, we've been detrimental to the person. They're not, they've already, under their care, so they can't just put them on the street. They're trying to get a place to drop them instead of putting them where they ought to go. We right. run into that some. We run into that sometimes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's why. So yeah. um, what so, are some other things that are on there they So saw? we do have um, a curfew. Yes. And a curfew is incredibly important. So... We are, we, we are doing our absolute best to be seen as an asset to the town and get along with the town and the agencies in the town. Um, so we have a curfew, and the curfew... Hey, Rick. Go ahead, John. Do you hey, uh, Eric Carrera's belongings need to be put together. Uh, Reddington Fairview is going to be stopping by to pick that up. I told him to come to the light building and ask for Rick. No, he's going to Bangor. Yeah, so we, we, uh, if we could do that, get his belongings together, as well as I've got medications over here that need to be picked up and included with that pickup. Okay, thank you. All right, so the curfew yes. is in place. And when yes. is the curfew? Okay, so but I want to say real quick, the reason we have the curfew is to be good neighbors, yes. okay, so that we can be good neighbors. We don't allow our people to be out in the town, running around all night long, hooting, hollering, breaking into businesses, Amen. causing problems. We don't do that. As a matter of fact, if we find out that any of our residents have caused a problem in the town, they're removed from the they premises. Are and they're not allowed to be here again. So um, they have to be on the property at 9 p.m. unless they're working. Yep. Some actually do find jobs, and that's Amen. what this place is about, right? Absolutely. So um, if, it's, if it's not job-related, then they have to be on the property at 9 they have to be inside the building at 10 o'clock. Yep. And they are not allowed outside the building again until 5 a.m. Because some of them work early. So they're not bothering the neighborhood. Correct. Wake up time is at 7. And then they're not allowed back in the bunk room until later that evening. What? So we don't allow them to slouch all day. We don't allow okay, them to sleep all day. Can you call me back in about 30 minutes? So. Okay, thank you. And um, so we, we hear about break-ins and stuff at like midnight. And people are going to go, well, them homeless people... Must be doing it. And that, that's frustrating. Uh, we've been blamed for some of the activities because we have housing around here full yes. of questionable they people. Do have, we have housing that does not have curfews. And sometimes because of their misbehavior, oh, it's those homeless people. 
um, our folks are required to be on the property at a certain time, and if they're not, it's noted, and then yep. they're spoken to, and they're given a warning. If it happens again, you're out, because, again, we're doing our best to present ourselves as an asset to the town and not a place where people can gather and have trouble. Um, we do our best. We have a zero tolerance for drugs and alcohol. We do our best to stomp that out when it rears its ugly head. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, um, and part of that, too, is uh, during the intake process, uh, a lot of times a caseworker is called for somebody or a hospital or various other institutions. And when that occurs, I ask for what's called an, uh, an assessment report. Okay. And that's a report that includes different diagnoses, mental health, medical, substance abuse, and prescription medications. And what's interesting, with the prescription medications, I'll see if anybody is on any type of um, scheduled drugs. Yep. And if they are, I let them know right up front, if you were to come here and everything works out, you do have to turn those in. They're locked in the office. They're yep. issued as prescribed. Yeah. Um, you can't keep them on your, your person. Right. And as a result of that, a lot of the people, especially in today's environment, a lot of people are on Suboxone that need to come to a homeless shelter. Yes. Uh, which is a heroin substitute. And so once I know that up front, you know, we can get that and keep it. And, or I can tell them if you come here, it's going to get locked up. And yep. you're going to have Seth about 50% of the time. Uh, those people don't want to come here. Because they have to give up their Suboxone. Right. Cause, yeah, because they want to either sell it or abuse it, do whatever Trade with it. it. Yeah. But yeah. that's eliminated a lot of the drug problems. Amen. Right. So <clears throat> it's, that's helping us get the people here off of drugs. Yes. Yeah. Because they're not, if there's a woman around, they can't right. get their hands on but it. People yeah. who are trying to quit earnestly. Yes. They're not they're not. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're not put with somebody that's on something that they shouldn't be, right, right. and encouraging them to do the same. Yeah, the other complaint they run into, people go, well, "Your guys are panhandling over by Walmart or downtown." If I come to you and I say, "Seth, what are you guys doing panhandling over the street?" What do you say? They're not allowed to. So Amen. now, now has it happened? Yes, yeah. but when it's reported and we investigate, and find out it is one of our people. They're warned not to do it again, or, or they leave. See, one of the things about our our People who help us, um, who, yes. who support us, who, who uh, pay our bills every month, is we want them to understand we're trying to teach these folks a way of living that is different from what they're used to so that they can continue with a productive life. And instituting rules and teaching accountability is a huge part of that. And so um, they receive everything they need here because of our donators. That, they receive all the food they need. Good point. Water, uh, bed. We do laundry for them here. Um, we heat. You know, we do everything that they need is right here. All they need to do is behave themselves and be progressive with their life. So, in other words, have a case manager. Look for an apartment. Look for work. If you can't work because you're disabled, you should still be looking for an apartment. And we make them accountable because we do reports. And I'll ask them, you know, you told me last week you were doing this. Yep. Where are you with it this week? And so no one is allowed to simply be here and exist. They have to be moving forward. And part of that is um, that you're not panhandling. You're not being a nuisance to the town. That yes. you're here and respecting the town and the people here. Awesome. Um, and, and another thing is, uh, you know, the rest of this is really just about behavior. Yeah. Um, and so behavior is big to us because some of the people that are here are homeless because of their behavior. Yes. And so it's important for us to teach them a better way, a, a different way of talking a different way of expressing yourself, um, a more productive way. <clears throat> and um, this is where grace comes in. Yep. Now, you told me, when I first took this job five years ago, you told me two things that have always stuck with me. Number one, Seth, I cannot give you a job description. I don't have enough paper. There you go. And it's true. <laughs> right? Because it yeah, changes absolutely. every day. It's, it does. And number two, you said the rules of the facility are like bullets in a gun. You only pull the trigger when you have to. Now, that goes for many of our rules. Some of our rules are unbendable. Yeah. They're just unbendable. Yeah. If you yeah. come on our property, you're one of our guys. We catch you selling drugs. Yeah. You're out. That's that's a, that's, that's out. You, you want to break the law, you're out. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we don't house outlaws here. But Can I interrupt? Yeah, one? please. You know, even though a lot of the things that we're talking about, you know, if someone does a certain thing, they're out. Um, we're not ogres. So... What happens is a lot of times we tell someone they have to leave maybe for a week. Yeah. Or not a week, but they're out. And then three or four days later, they, they call back, and all of a sudden they're very humble. Yeah. Uh, and they're pleading to please let them come back. And we almost hands down do. Yeah. Unless yep. it's something like someone, you know, was 
was caught selling drugs or, right. or got in a fight, something. you know. Yeah, just there's, was, there's a danger. Yeah, right. but other than that, you know, uh, I think we're extremely um, liberal. With we show a lot of grace. Second chances, third And chances. we also instituted a thing way, way back where it's called house arrest. Yep. Yes. And if somebody yep. is having a hard time with the drinking, uh, they go on around the corner and they, they buy moose, they come back, and that's the only thing. They're good about everything else. They right. work, they help, and they right. go, all right, what would Jesus do? Right. right. We'll give him a second chance. We're going to set him down and go, and you can't leave the property right. for X number of days or whatever we're going to do. That way we keep them from going to the store right. to get the moves. Well, unless they're breaking the law, um, we have a system in place. Because kicking someone out is always the last thing we want to do. Absolutely. We never seek that as our first option. So sometimes we'll start off with just reminding them of the rules or just counseling them and finding out what's going on where they're at and what we can do to make it better sometimes we'll say all right you're out for three days yep. you can come back after three days and hopefully that time out there will make you think or two it'll be like you know hey you're 30 days house restriction yep and if you leave the property in those 30 days or we catch you doing what you did before then then you are out but in essence by doing that and by giving them red flags along the way they actually kick themselves out and so, you yes. know, I can say, listen, I've asked you to stop. I've shown you what you're doing yeah. wrong, and you've chosen to to keep doing your own thing. So I have no choice now but to tell you to go. Because if I don't make them stop, everyone's going to start doing well, it. Well, we, we do have boundaries. We, we do. do have contracts. Yep. They do sign. These are, yep. by the way, this contract is signed by everybody comes in. It's read to everybody that comes in. Word for word. So nobody can say, uh, that's like when they don't want to... They'll come in to me and go, well, do, I, do I have to go to the premium? I go, yes. Well, I don't believe what you believe. Well, did you sign a contract? Uh, yeah. And I said, well, then you got to go to premium. And they go, well, like, there's no well about it. I, I don't even ask them if they read the contract because whoever is doing this, we read it to them. Yeah. And then they sign it. So whatever we're asking them to hold them to, whatever's in that contract, they already know, and they put their John Hancock on because they want to come in. And so we have to have the rules. We have to hold them to we some do. standard. The other thing is, when we started back, uh, Tommy's been with, been on staff here forever with me, worked with me forever. And he was here before we had families and all of that. We were just in the, in the church before we had dementia and all that. Well, we, we didn't have a big filter outside of uh, the sex offenders because we lived close to a school, so we've never been able to have them. Uh, we we send the people's names to the PD and they run them. So, but we weren't so tight on stuff as we are now. But once the children came down the road, the yeah. children started coming. Yeah. Then we had to tighten up on things, and we you know we show grace. But if it's in the area that's going to really be detrimental to our kids, then that's where grace has to end because yes. those kids deserve some grace too. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and if you count here, we got what twenty. We got. 23, you did have 23 kids. 23. Whatever. Yep, yep. Uh, give or take. Yep. Is, but we have 23 children here that we are totally responsible for. With, with their parents here, obviously. I, here with their parents. Yeah, with their parents. Yeah. But we make sure that there's an environment that their parents don't have to worry about. My, my ba Is my baby safe? Safe. My baby is safe here. Right. All right? And that's another reason we have the rules. Our neighbors, they complain because people out and around. That's why we have the rules. So we explain all those things, and they know them ahead of time. So if it comes to the point where we ask them to leave, we've shown grace, 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 but there does come a point where we have to enforce the rules. Otherwise, we wind up with nothing. Well, another thing that we point out to them, too, that, that helps is, like, we say we own up to our end of the contract every day. Absolutely. Every day. You are not denied food. You're not denied bedding. You're not denied showers. You're not denied uh, warmth. You're not denied a bed. Yep. So, you know, it, isn't there something inside you that should say, hey, you know, I should give something back? Mm -hmm. yep. And even if it's just good behavior, that's really all we're asking. Well, I, I don't know about anybody else if you're watching this, but I'm sure whatever home you grew up in, there were some rules. Uh, and I remember coming out of the Navy, coming home, and, uh, you know, I, man, in, I was in the service and we don't have a curfew, you know, board ship and all of that. And uh, I come home and... I ran into a curfew, mm -hmm. and here I am, you know, I'm 20 years old and been out you know, on my own. It's like, I, I what? And uh, my folks said, there's a curfew. And I go, I, 
I'm not used to curfew. And my dad sat me down. I said, son, understand this. Your mom and I got to get up and go to work tomorrow morning. Right. We have a right, a right to be able to get, go to sleep without being woke up in the middle of the night. We understand you're a full-grown man. We understand all of that. We understand you used to freedom. But there's certain things that on our side that aren't fair if you don't go along with them. Yeah. And that's kind of what this is. Yes. Uh, okay, we'll let them know. And I, and you got it? We're, all right, we got, hey, yeah, if you got a, <laughs> you can help us with the communication. Intercom system right. would be awesome. <laughs> but, you know, if, so dad told me, he said, son, look, I understand. But he said, if, if you want to stay out later than that, then you really need to go get your own place. Our and rules, he, had, he had a right to yeah, do of course that. He, well, the thing is, our rules aren't, they don't target individuals. They are in place for mutual respect and safety. Yes. And a never, blanket. It's right. a blanket. It's a blanket. Everybody's required to follow these rules. It, yes. Even my staff. It's not something that, well, I'm going to make a rule specifically for you because I don't like you. It is even keel all the way across, and everyone receives grace unless they violate the law mm -hmm. or they become violent yeah. or threatening. Then, and the other thing is, we're 24-7. Other shelters only have them at night. Right. And they send them out on the street in the daytime. Well, they don't right. have to deal with the children and right. protect them during the day and all this stuff. They don't have all of that. Right. Where we're 24-7, it's just like living at home. Right. And I'm sorry, but uh, as my mom and dad had a right to set rules, they that did. was their home. Yep. Dad said, look, I pay the mortgage. Yep. I put the food on the table. I do all of this. I have a right to go to bed at night and sleep. You know, and if you go somewhere else, you want that? If you're, if you're paying your own bills, you've got a right to come in and go as you please. Well, that's correct. So that's where we're at. Yep. I've uh, actually said to people, listen, if you weren't here, would you have a place that you could go and stay? And if they say no, I said, then what are you doing? Yeah. Follow the rules. It's, it's, you know, it's a great point. You know, um, and the funny part of it is, someone balking chores, and I'm going, if you're in an apartment, who's washing your dishes? Right. Who's making your bed? Evidently no Who's one. sweeping your floor? <laughs> Evidently no. Yeah. I don't want to see that apartment. Nope. Oh, my word. Nope. But I, I, I did this today. I know it's been a little awkward. We've had phones and all that. But I want that because I want you to see what it's like. If you invest your $9, this is what you're invested in. And I wanted to allay some rumors out there about us and what we're about and what we do. So you, you know exactly how we operate, mm -hmm. what we do, how we do our intake. Who's accepted? Who isn't? Why it's so? What the rules are while they're here? I want I wanted you to know that. And so, in closing, I just encourage you jump on board with us and be a part of this ministry. Um, come for a tour. We're here at twelve o'clock on the street in Skowhegan. Seth is here. He'll give you a tour yep. anytime. Yeah, you just absolutely. call. Let us know you're coming. He does that all the time. Yep. Uh, we'll take you around. We'll show you everything. We'll Love introduce to. you to people. Uh, you get a chance to meet the kids. You get a chance to do all of that, which is really awesome. Also, I got four books out, Sheltered by Jesus books. And you can uh, order those. Uh, we have two prices, $10 or free, whichever one fits. I don't make it. I wrote them. I authored them. Uh, I don't make a penny on them. They're all the funds, whatever's donated for the books, goes right into this ministry. So when you buy the books, you're helping folks get off the street. But all you got to do is... Go on here uh, on YouTube and just give us your name and address, or you can call the office at 207-474-8833 and tell them, I would like book 1234, Tom or Seth will answer the phone as a rule. There might be somebody else, but mostly you'll, you'll be talking to Tom or Seth, and they will take your information down, and we will mail those books right out to you because we want to put them in your hands. Seriously, if you don't, if you go, I can't afford 10 bucks. We, I want to, we want to minister to you. Those books are in ministry. Mm -hmm. And what are they? What's in the books? They're all the things we're talking about, the miracles that runs this place, the problems we've run into, the excitement we've run into. You're going to hear testimonies of people who lived here and all of that. Just kind of like, it's kind of like my podcast, only it's in book form. And it's written by me, the dumb hick from Skowhegan. It's written in hick and east. Uh, so it's just like we're talking. That's how I write. So I want to thank you for coming to my office today, meet my staff, being a part of what we're doing. And uh, again, thank you. And thank you for your support. And all I got to say is, y'all come back. Mm -hmm.